A 63-year-old man boarded a Lufthansa flight from Thailand to Germany, and he suffered a gruesome and bloody death during that flight. So what happened? Hi, I'm Dr. Messina, and we're going to get into what was the probable cause of this catastrophic hemorrhage that this poor man suffered. It was documented at the Lufthansa gate that some of the staff noticed that he seemed sweaty, short of breath, and very fatigued. His wife, who states that she is in the nursing industry but didn't say she was a nurse herself, felt that it was due to them having to run to Lufthansa gate to catch the plane. But it was much, much more than that. After takeoff, these symptoms worsened. He started to get a lot of gastritis, he felt very ill and was extremely short of breath and was sweating profusely. That's actually called diaphoresis. She requested a medical evaluation and a 30 year old physician came over and evaluated him. But honestly, there was not much more he could do than to take a pulse, a blood pressure and give him a few sips of like ginger ale to maybe calm his stomach down. However, shortly after that, he started vomiting up copious amounts of blood, which flew out of his mouth and nose, hitting passengers, the walls of the plane, and the seats, horrifying everyone around him. And he passed away shortly thereafter. So what happened here? The most likely culprit would be a ruptured esophageal varicy. You learn in your pathology classes in medical school that if you find someone dead on the floor with copious amounts of blood having come out of their nose and mouth, that it's a ruptured varicy until proven otherwise. So what are these ruptured esophageal varices? And how do you get them? The most common culprit would be cirrhosis of the liver. Cirrhosis of the liver, as we can see in this slide, is a scarring of the liver, which is really a large organ for filtration and a lot of organs depend on a healthy liver for proper venous drainage, the esophagus being one of them. When you have a scarred cirrhotic liver, the resistance to flow is increased and you start to dilate veins, in particular in the esophagus. You get dilated varicose veins, very similar to the varicose veins you might see in someone's legs. However, the big difference is if one of those esophageal varices ruptures, it's very difficult to put any pressure on it to try to stop the bleeding. And if you're not in an emergency room at the time of a rupture, the odds of survival go down precipitously. So what could have been going on? Well, in all likelihood, he was bleeding a little bit from esophageal varices before he got to the gate. He started to get blood in the stomach. Anytime you have blood in the stomach, it's very irritating. You get a gastritis, you feel a little nauseous. Anyone who's had a tooth pulled will know that feeling. As he becomes progressively more anemic, he'll start to become tachyptic. In other words, breathe faster. Breathe faster to help get more oxygen to the tissue. His heart rate would also go up. As he starts to approach shock, he'll start to sweat and become diaphoretic. That was what was going on at the gate. It wasn't that he ran and exerted himself. It was that he was already bleeding and it was starting to get into a near catastrophic phase. Once he was on the plane and the rupture occurred, it hit the catastrophic phase. So what do we do if someone does have an esophageal varicy? Well, on that plane, there was very little that could have been done. In an emergency situation, you could put an inflatable balloon down the esophagus, which is this long, skinny balloon that we inflate, and it presses on those varices and it tamponades them off. In other words, very similar to if you get a cut and you press it down with your thumb for a minute or two and it stops bleeding. Sometimes a gastroenterologist could go down with a scope and put a little ligature or a tie at the base of the varices and basically tie it off. Sometimes they embolize them. Sometimes they can put a topical agent on that kind of hardens it up. However, when one ruptures, it's usually catastrophic and most often fatal. How could you avoid getting esophageal varices? 
you could avoid them by taking care of your liver. It might sound funny, but it's important to know what taxes your liver and what doesn't. The number one cause for cirrhosis of the liver is alcohol. You don't have to be an alcoholic to get cirrhosis. If you're predisposed to developing cirrhosis, you could just be a social drinker and develop it. Alcohol and also an unhealthy diet can increase the fat inside the liver. It's called hepatic steatosis and you get fatty liver and that fat irritates the liver and the chronic inflammation can cause scarring of the liver. So a healthy diet and weight is very important as well. Alcoholism also increases fatty liver. So being careful about how much alcohol you consume. There are certain disease states such as hemochromatosis that could damage your liver. And if you have one of those disease states, it's very important to stay on top of it, not only to control the disease, but to control secondary problems that might come from that disease. And unfortunately, once you get cirrhosis of the liver, it's very hard to really reverse it. Unfortunately, even though the liver has regenerative properties, once you get cirrhosis, it doesn't regenerate that much. So being cautious about it and being mindful about what can tax your liver and what can't, it's pretty important for a healthy lifestyle.